Hello again. Today I'm going to tie a paralooped black hopper for you. Sometimes it's quite difficult to see the old hoppers when they're bobbing about in the water. So I'm going to use a, a white coloured aero wing paraloop just to help with visibility for that. Um, it's a good fly this. Um, I've caught a lot of fish with it. The thread I'm going to be using is the Uni Black AOP. And first thing I'm going to do is just catch my thread onto the shank of the hook. With all this mild weather we're having a late, uh, I dare say dry flies will probably come into play a bit quicker this year than they have in years gone by. Uh, I've just got a little bit of red holographic that I want to have in the box just to give it the the added X factor if you like. So I'll catch that in and I'm just going to put three or four turns in at the butt of the fly. And it's fairly hard wearing stuff this so I don't need to worry about um, protection. Once I've caught that in I can snip away the holograph there. Don't worry about the tag. I can catch that in later on. I'm also going to catch in for my rib. I'm going to be using the uh, Spartan clear rib and I'm just going to catch that in at the end here. He says. There we go. Didn't want to play. And I'll bring my thread back to where I want my black squirrel dubbing to start. Uh, I'm just using black squirrel. A lot of people prefer seals fur for the buoyancy properties, but this is this is as good. By the time it's fluffed up, ginked up, there's not much odds. So catch that in. I can always add some more later if I've not got enough in here. And I'm going to bring that round all the way up. It's dubbed in quite thickly. And I've got about a quarter of an inch um, before the hook eye. And I'm just going to come in with my dubbing brush, tease that out. Don't worry that you've got some long fibres there, um, I'm going to sort that in a second. Now with a clear, a clear rib, and, and what I like about this stuff is the versatility, I'm going to use a, a green marker just to colour the side that's going to go down onto the fly. Now it will be quite difficult to see on the camera here but it does give quite a nice effect and I'm just going to come over like so and it's, it's quite a thick ribbing this so you can see I'm capturing in quite a lot of the fibres but because I have fluffed it out there's still quite a lot of material sticking through. Now I only want three turns there uh, and then I can lock my thread in and remove the remainder of the rib. And you can see there's quite a lot sticking out here. Now I've pre-tied my legs, my hopper legs, um, and I've done it with two, two strands of pheasant tail tied together to achieve the the four sort of legs splained down. I'm going to tie them in two on each side. So I'll do the side nearest me first. Catch that in. And then with my other two I'm going to bring them down the other side. Excuse my fingers. While I catch these in. Like so. And they're all hanging nicely down below the fly. I can trim away my excess on the top and that's looking pretty good. 
Next, I've got some aero wing. This is one strand of aero wing. Now, I don't want it tied tightly because I want the loop to be quite open and be able to take a fair old whack of gink or muslin, whatever your preferred poison is for keeping your dries up. Now, I put the, the aero wing in there quite loosely and I pulled it through so that the end is above the hook eye. Now, like I said, I don't want it to be tight, so I'm going to keep that quite loosely over, like so, and I'm going to catch in to make my loop on top of the fly. And you can see uh, already that's quite loose. I've got that secured, so I can come in now with my snips, take away the excess aero wing, and the last thing to do is add the hackle to the front. I've got um, one that I've been using for various flies. It's only a little bit left. I've trimmed away the last few fibres at the bottom there. And I'm going to catch that in like so. <clears throat> I've got a pair of hackle pliers here. Just going to catch that onto the end of the fibre and I'm going to bring my hackle quite close I want lots of fibres up here uh, the more fibres you've got in the hackle uh, the better the fly will float as I get near the front make sure that the feather is near the eye, bring the thread in behind, pull what you can back for the first couple of turns. Sometimes the feather, if you've got weak feathers, will just snap away at this point. Um, if not, keep your thread taut and that will just spring away. Next thing I'm going to do is lick my thumb and forefinger and I'm going to bring as much of the fibres up as I can. onto the top of the fly and then I should have a fairly clear profile all that should be hanging down now are my legs any hackle that's below the shank of the hook I'm going to trim away because I want it to at the end of the day I want it to sit in the surface film few half hitches to finish off and I'm just going to use a tad, a touch, sorry a touch of Sally Hansen just to finish that off and as usual pop an old feather through the eye like so Once that's done, you can turn the fly over. Anything that's protruding that shouldn't be at the bottom, you can trim away. And if I just turn this side on, you can see the little para loop there. Uh, and you know, I'm sure as you're aware, when we're all fishing on the dull days, it's quite. It can be quite difficult to pick your dry fly out. But um, that little white loop not only aids the flotation of the fly but it also helps to give a good sighter to where it is in the water. I hope that's given you some ideas. You can do it in various colours, ginger, red, um, and, and they'll all work. It's the profile that's important I feel. I hope you enjoyed that. Thanks very much for watching.